Becky Lynch with a chair. Her loss is Carmella's gain. But do they really want to start a battle with the Empress? Red coming, Rainmaker away. Lastly, Bro Kick. And the damage is done to Okada again. No count outs, no disqualifications, nothing stopping the Gorillas of Destiny and the Good Brothers with the tag team titles on the line. This time, the drive for five is achieved. SmackDown Live have won this battle, and I move one step closer to winning the war. Hello everyone and welcome. This is SmackDown Live. You can almost count the days to SummerSlam on one hand. What an evening we are heading towards and what a SmackDown Live will be heading towards as well. Oh, isn't this a familiar sight? What now? What in the world? These two men, are they... Are they going to throw down to decide who holds on to SmackDown Live? AJ Styles will represent Shane McMahon this Sunday. I was going to say... I don't think Christian James is in any place to get in ring. But he knows someone who is. So there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. Finn Balor and AJ Styles this Sunday at SummerSlam once more. If Balor wins, Shane McMahon is gone. If AJ Styles wins, Christian James is gone. It's all to play for this Sunday when those two rivals meet. Oh, speaking of rivals, Bobby Fish assaulting Kazuchika Okada in the parking lot. Just days, days before they meet at SummerSlam with the WWE title on the line. Okada clearly blindsided. He has no response right now to the offense of Bobby Fish. Another chaotic way to start things off and speak of Finn Balor. He's in action tonight in our main event of the evening. Square it off against his former bodyguard in Bad Luck Valley. Hopefully there's a moment to breathe in the midst of everything we just saw. Shane McMahon and Christian James will have to put it all on the line this Sunday. They will have men representing them. AJ Styles against Finn Balor. What a matchup that's promising to be as they meet once again. The stage and the tensions amplified further. Wait a minute as Kevin Owens comes to the ring. Now it's Mojo Rawley. For the second week in a row, Mojo Rawley from behind on Kevin Owens. Last week it was as Owens was arriving to the arena. And now, on the ramp just before Owens' match, what has got into Mojo Rawley? I don't know. What I do know is that he is providing one hell of an onslaught to Kevin Owens. One that the four-time WWE Champion never saw coming. Look at this Mojo just carrying him to the ring. What the hell is going on here? Somehow a drop on the ramp. Mojo crawling him further, dragging Owens further. Here comes Sin Cara out of the rescue. Hello! Mojo sidestepped him. Owens hasn't been able to get anything in in his own offense. Look out now, Mojo dumping St. Cara face first on the outside. He has his hands on Kevin Owens again. He throws him in the ring. He's demanding for the ref to ring the bell, and he does so. Mojo plants Owens again. 
Is it? Is this gonna? Is this really gonna happen? What the hell? Mojo Rawley just beat Kevin Owens. What? How? How can you let something like that stand? What the hell has got into Mojo Rawley? Seriously. What is it with this man? A, a twisted being. Mojo Rawley has quickly become. What the hell just happened? We, I don't even know what to make of everything, folks. We've been on the air not even five minutes, and all of a sudden, chaos has hit every wall in sight here in Anchorage. And it ain't about to get any better because two rivals will sell the score right now. The black heart and the bag coming towards the ring. Tommaso Ciampa to go one-on-one -on -one with CM Punk. Oh my God. I know it's a go-home show and I know that usually is code word for chaos around here. But oh, are they staying? Are they sticking to that being the truth on SmackDown Live? So Finn Balor and AJ Styles for this Sunday. If Balor wins, Shane McMahon is gone from SmackDown. If Styles wins, Christian James is gone from SmackDown. Bobby Fish assaulting Kazuchika Okada in the parking lot. And Mojo Rawley once again coming out here. Not only flattening Sin Cara, but pinning Kevin Owens. I have stunned, really a stunned start to the evening. And these two men, they're going to put in chaos, but it's going to be in a good way because here comes CM Punk right now. Last week, of course, he was in the general manager's office with Shane McMahon to make sure that McMahon couldn't interfere in the tag team match between the Good Brothers and the Gorillas of Destiny. Two weeks ago, he knocked him out in the ring with a go to sleep. Shane McMahon and CM Punk have had plenty of time to get to know each other over the last few weeks. That's for certain. Right now, CM Punk gets to go to war with a man who he already knows plenty about, a man he's already met plenty of times in the past, and a man who he certainly has nothing nice towards. Punk and Champa have been waiting to do battle with no third parties involved, nothing to surround them aside from one another. And that finally comes right now, close indeed to the biggest fight of the summer. And of course, I gotta imagine Tommaso Ciampa, win or lose here tonight, is going to have a very, very intently close eye on what transpires at SummerSlam. There are three possible instances for him to cash in that Money in the Bank briefcase. And where and who does he cash in on if, of course, he chooses to cash in that briefcase? You can t oh, oh, good God. Oh, are you kidding me? Shane McMahon at, at ringside now. Watching on as Punk gets ready to go one on one with Chapa. Bell rings are underway here. McMahon taking a seat and getting ready to watch on as these two rivals throw hands at one another. So here we go then. Chopper and Punk getting things underway. I said they'd like to do it with no third parties involved. Well, that didn't last much time at all because Shane McMahon is watching on right now. Huge elbow in the face there by Chopper as we get things going. Could that have unsettled Punk a little bit? Could that have knocked him mentally, maybe? Chopper doesn't care as he's in right away. Hook the head in, drill into the mat, cover made kick out. CM Punk is essentially going to have to have it a, an eye in the back of his head, really, to keep his eye on Shane McMahon. He's going to have to have 20-20-20-20 vision to make sure that Shane McMahon doesn't get involved here or the originals by any way, shape, or measure. All while trying to keep his eye on a rival like Tommaso Ciampa. Look at this now, though. 
Punk leg dropping. Dropping the legs down on Tommaso Chubb. That doesn't care about Shane McMahon's involvement or not. Four leg drops in a row. Cover on Ciampa. Looking to beat his rival. And that tells the tale. Ciampa kicking out early. What happened now? Big chop in the chest from Ciampa as he's back up on his feet and ready to go with more offense. Back body drop there. Neck crank as he comes down. Ciampa now unloading away. Ciampa doesn't care about any of these issues with, sh with uh, CM Punk and Shane McMahon. All he cares about is beating his rival. All he cares about is the sweet taste of victory over CM Punk. And he almost got it there off of that German suplex. An evening of action we've had already, ladies and gentlemen. And there's more to come this evening as well. The number one contender for the SmackDown Women's Championship will be determined up next. Tag match with the Intercontinental Champion in action as well. And of course, Adlock Farley and Finn Balor to be in the main event. So much already to talk about what else will be written here tonight on SmackDown Live heading into SummerSlam. What I do know right now is that these two guys, though, not giving an inch to one another. They are making life as tough as possible for one another. And Tommaso Ciampa now. Look at this. Dragon sleeper around the throat of Punk. And the strength to hoist him up in the air as well from that rope. Back to those punches as well. Holding the head in place so Punk can get out of the way. Covers made. Just shy of being enough. Shane McMahon. Glad we don't have a camera on him, but he must be loving every bit of what he's seeing right now because Punk is struggling here. And his loss is Tommaso Ciampa's gain. And the black heart in the bank is certainly capitalizing on everything in front of him. What? A few months it has been for Ciampa, of course, since the downfall of DIY. And the same can be said, of course, for the man he betrayed with Johnny Gargano, who main event SummerSlam this Sunday, taking on the greatest of all time in Seth Rollins. How close will Ciampa be watching that match? Right now, though, he's making sure to stay close with Punk so that he can't get away from him. Again, Punk's head is dealt a heavy blow with that DDT into the mat from the apron. Ciampa now to the top rope. Not every day we see him go to the top rope anymore. Went for the knee there with the brace. And Punk moved out of the way. Opening now. Neck breaker from Punk. The five-time world champion. Looking for five and six. Brock Lesnar has his suplexes. CM Punk has his leg drops, it would seem. And he's bringing them down on the throat of Chapa. Punk now finally getting some offense going. Finally starting to breathe life in this competition. Here we go now. Moves off from Punk. Wait. Wait, 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 wait. Here comes Shane. And Punk went right for the apron. Shane McMahon made a movement closer towards the ring. And Punk was there in an instant. Don't keep your eyes on Shane. Keep your eyes on Ciampa, who pounces on the opportunity. Again in with that DDT. All it took was one slip up. And Ciampa was right there to pounce. Very tail ending. Cover from Ciampa. And the distraction brings victory. Tommaso Ciampa wins it. Just as Punk looked to be finding a new lease of life in this contest, Ciampa wins it. And he is looking over to Shane. And he ain't too happy either. He's getting out of the ring. And he's going right towards Shane McMahon right now. And he's got nothing nice to say to the co-general manager of SmackDown Live. And oh, Ciampa putting his hands on him. Ciampa just assaulted Shane McMahon. Wait, and speaking of assaulting, they're going again. They'll fight all the way to SummerSlam if they could. Fish and Okada 
backstage once more. Round two is on between these guys. There might not be any of them left to make it a SummerSlam, but they quite simply do not care. You know, sometimes you just have to accept all this chaos that goes on. And right now, I think I'm just I think we're just gonna all have to do that, folks. We're just gonna have to sit down and just watch this chaos unfold. Because that is exactly that is pretty much all we can do. Because it has been a wild evening so far, and we aren't even done yet. We still got so much more to go. As we have right now with the number one contender match for the SmackDown Women's Championship. This is the plays here of Christian James coming into effect, denying Becky Lynch an immediate rematch for the SmackDown Women's Championship because she's a member of the originals. If Lynch wants to win that title, she has to go through the woman who she cost the opportunity to win the title at Judgment Day by driving a steel chair into her skull in Asuka. And we could see a repeat of it all because bad luck Farley may be in the main event, but he is at ringside for this contest right now. But Asuka doesn't mind. Farley got involved last week, of course, with Asuka, as did Becky Lynch as she drove the steel chair into her head once again. Asuka was pinned by Carmella following that, but as I said last week, do they really want to start a war with an Empress? It seems to be the case, and they will throw down here tonight with the opportunity to face Paige for the Raw Women's, for the SmackDown Women's Championship, my apologies, up for grabs. Yet more of this war between SmackDown Live and the originals being demonstrated, yet more of the issues that are building and growing from both sides continuing to flow really as week by week goes by i know i said smackdown live were one step closer to winning the wall last week but that could all be undone this sunday of course with what happens between aj styles and finn balor that is where the war ends they said it themselves one final battle in this war will it happen the way that I think the majority of us want it to. With Shane McMahon out of power. And Christian James finally able to call SmackDown Live his own show for the first time since before WrestleMania. It doesn't mean the end for the originals. I wish it did, but it's not the case. It does mean the end for Shane McMahon if Finn Balor wins. Right now, with these two women colliding with one another. There is that Civil War aspect to it, but right now these two women also just want the opportunity of Paige. They want the shot at the SmackDown Women's Championship. Asuka was screwed out of it last time she went for that title. Becky Lynch, by association in the originals, and in all fairness, her underhanded tactics during her reign. I'm okay with her having to fight to re-earn her spot at the title. Hopefully we just get a decisive contest between these two women as well for a change. Look out, flying. Hip attack there in the corner by Oscar takes down Becky Lynch. Keep your eye on Farley at ringside. You never know what he could get up to, the underboss of the originals. Like I said, he may well have Finn Balor later on this evening, but he doesn't care as his shirt literally says IDC, IDK, IDGAF. You know what those acronyms mean. Contest continuing on between these two fierce rivals. Paige is going to be watching on backstage as well, knowing that one of these two women are next in line for a SmackDown Women's Championship. Of which one will it be? Chopping the chest now by Becky Lynch. Starting to run all the way with a good few shots here. Oscar in a bit of trouble though. Look out now, Empress going face first into the mat. And Becky Lynch now controlling the contest. Oscar in trouble right now. This one makes Becky Lynch such a, a successful women's champion in this universe. Four-time women's champion. More women's title reigns than any other woman in this universe. 
Oscar, of course, started the year as the Raw Women's Champion. I imagine she'd like to end the year with another title around her waist. Look at the way that arm is being bent back. Oh, counter made there by Oscar. Thrust kick in the gut. Forearms. Strikes opening up here. Lynch is shaken up. And those shots connecting down from Oscar there. Neither of these women want to back down from the other. Neither of these two women want to lose to one another. They know, not only regarding the title, but to their rivalry, how significant it is if they suffer defeat to the other side. Single underhook suplex there. Hammerlock suplex even cover made, but it was only a one count. Now Asuka comes up with the counter once again. Here we go. What can she make happen here in the corner? Oh! Open-handed palm strike rocked Lynch and then some. Asuka now with the knee in the face of Becky Lynch. Both women are able to find counters to one another repeatedly and they're making life awfully tough for one another. Look out now Lynch bending the arm in the opposite direction to what it's supposed to go. So easy to just snap a bone in that process. Lynch gonna go to the top row, pays for it. Oscar right there and ready to capitalize. Lynch comes up with a counter from up high. Harakarana, shoulders down, legs are hooked. Will this do it? No, two and a half. Lynch almost became the number one contender for the title that she lost two weeks ago now, I believe it was. In the corner she has Oscar again and she will go right back to that arm. She will go right back to talking on it, right back to doing as much damage as possible to the arm of Oscar, Denying the Oscar lock to the best of her abilities, making it easier for the disarmer as well. Roll up now, roll up by Lynch. Will this do it? Oscar kicks out at one. This has become all Becky Lynch in a hurry. Oscar in big trouble needs to find something to turn this contest around sooner rather than later does the empress and lynch might not give her that opportunity look out oh i was expecting the disarmer but lynch just cracked it with a huge knee in the face will that finish her off kick at it too from oscar Jesus, what a knee that was. I think Asuka's resiliency, the only thing that kept her in it there. The natural heart of Asuka as she comes fighting back now. Spinning kick takes down Lynch. Farley trying to rile up the crowd. I'm surprised he hasn't gone for a cheer. Or maybe the referee with an even closer eye on Farley's actions than usual. Asuka just launching her body towards Becky Lynch there. And Lynch is in trouble now. She thought she'd finish things off, but it wasn't the case. That needed to do it. And Asuka lining up with a second wind. Has the arm of Lynch. Armbar. Cross armbar. Will this make her tap? Will Lynch submit here to Asuka? Will Asuka become the number one contender to the SmackDown Women's title? No. Lynch, a submission expert, knows her way. Out of a hold similar to her own. Fight continues on here. Wait, Oscar again with those kicks. Damn near kicked her head off with that one. Oscar got all of it. And the lights have faded for Becky Lynch. The cover is made. Oscar is the number one contender to the SmackDown with his title. These two women let up nothing with one another. They showed every bit of their hatred that they have for each other, and they finished it off. Asuka finished it off. Asuka will face Paige for the SmackDown Women's Championship. Revenge for the Empress. Oh, you are kidding me! They keep on going! Rainmaker! but not for much longer. 
with a rainmaker. Oh, Carter downs Fish, and he finally gets one over on the dangerous alliance before SummerSlam. No! Bobby Lashley lying in wait. A fraction too late to make the save, but not too late to do some damage. Dominator on the concrete floor. The deck royally stacked against Okada, heading into Sunday. And speak of Sunday, we know that this man will contend for the Intercontinental Championship. The leader of the Saviors is here, but not in action tonight. Like I said, the Intercontinental Champion himself is. The Saviors will go up against Samoa Joe and Jay White right now. Here they are, Drew Gulak and Roderick Strong, accompanied, of course, by the leader himself, Ricochet. What a turn of events it has been. I talked about Ciampa and what a good few months it has been for him, for Gargano. And Ricochet is another man to add himself into that list from the WrestleMania betrayal of Kota Ibushi to putting him out in the injury shelf through the assistance of these two men. So now being one pay-per-view away from claiming the Intercontinental title to the Saviors. I didn't know that we'd ever see a group like this one, but there is no arguing the fact that Ricochet as the savior of SmackDown Live, as he called himself, has turned himself into a mainstay. And I think sooner rather than later is going to turn himself into a big time player on this roster. And I honestly, I say sooner rather than later, it could all start this Sunday. You never know what could happen at SummerSlam. You never know what those two men could get up to. And you never know what Ricochet could do in that ring to defeat. Jay White and claim the Intercontinental title as his own. But he has some mighty strong backup this evening in the Samoa submission machine. Samoa Joe charging towards the ring. And he is making his way there right now to team alongside Jay White. Joe doesn't need a second invitation to beat people up. He is more than okay to do so. I wonder what he will do in this contest to hurt Drew Gulak, to hurt Roderick Strong. Whatever it is, I imagine he's going to have some fun doing it as well. Always a treat to see Samoa Joe on SmackDown Live, of course, and I'm looking forward to seeing what he will do this evening. Joe ready to throw down and throw in the towel in the direction of the originals. Right off the bat, Joe stating he has no respect for those men at all. But here comes a man who might well have even less respect for the Saviors. It is the Intercontinental Champion himself, Jay White, coming towards the ring. Let's see what he will do right now. Switchblade making his way out here this evening. Being the Intercontinental Champion since Judgment Day. And faces a grave danger in the Saviors. He's already felt the wrath of them when he defended the Intercontinental title against Roderick Strong and what happened after the match as well, of course, with the two-on-one assault from Strong and Gulak at the calling at the behest of Ricochet. These two men made their match official, I think it was two weeks ago now on SmackDown Live. Ricochet challenged him, and Jay White was more than okay to accept. Can the Switchblade connect with Blade Runner this Sunday and leave SummerSlam still as the Intercontinental Champion, or will he be tasked, will he be tested against the savior of SmackDown Live? Ricochet in many ways can kind of control his own destiny heading into this Sunday. He can cause problems for Jay White. He can maybe just slip in that ring right now, try and isolate Joe as soon as possible, and just put the boots to Jay White. Give him an injury, bandage him up, do whatever is possible. Heading into this Sunday, 
anything to make it easier for him to leave as the Intercontinental Champion. Why not? Why not give it a try? It's not like it stopped Ricochet or anyone else on SmackDown Live from trying it before. We'll see as the match goes on right now. Though Drew Gulak and Samoa Joe starting things off here. Not going to be a, a nice ride for Drew Gulak at all. As he's locked in the ring with a man. He might be looking to try and get himself in the books towards a shot at that title after SummerSlam. And you know, Joe is... Uh, Always a man looking for an opportunity, and he could be trying to slip his way into a chance right now. Irish whip off the ropes here comes Joe. Back elbow there from Gulak. Joe doesn't come off his feet. Up and over the top rope. Forearm in the face from Joe there. And this is where Joe is at his most dangerous when he's allowed to unleash his offense. Here goes Joe now. Look at that shining wizard in the back of the head. Nailed him with it. I don't think we have to wait too long to see the champ in the ring right now. Tag is made. Jay White, the legal man in this contest. Nice double team there from White and Joe. Super kick attempt there from Jay White. Missed it. Gulak in now. Cross face. Cross face applied. Referee with a close eye on this one. No surprise that White doesn't tap out there. Back up to their feet, both men go. Gulak swinging wildly, connecting with some forearms. Wherever else he can find. White there, tag made. Now the Messiah, the backbreaker, of the legal man. Roderick strong in here. And there is a backbreaker from the get-go. Into a suplex on Jay White. Roddy Strong did a number on the back, of course, on Jay White when they met for the Intercontinental title a few weeks back. And he might look to pick up where he left off. Talked about Okada's neck really heading, his head and his neck heading into SummerSlam. The same could be said for Jay White and his back heading into SummerSlam. The damage that has been done by Roderick Strong and by the Saviors to make sure that their leader can walk out of Brooklyn as the Intercontinental Champion. Just trying to keep my eye on Ricochet there. See what he does at ringside. See if there's anything he'll look to try and pull off. Look at the assist there from White as almost 300 pounds of Samoa Joe comes crashing down on Roderick Strong, who's very quick to counter, though. Good shots here firing away from Roddy Strong now. Irish whip off the ropes. Oh, Joe came charging into that knee. like Drew Gulak is about to come charging back into this ring. Tag made. Snap made. Holds the head in place so Gulak can get all of that big boot. Stops down into the gut now. And Gulak going to work on Joe. Samoa Joe really needs to find a, a way back into this contest. Jay White was doing some good things, but Joe, same can't be said for him. He's really struggling right now. And you can see that the way he's stuck in this hole. Gulak is an expert wrestler and technical in so many ways but Joe is just struggling here against Gulak maybe that's me uh, discounting the work of Drew Gulak and discounting what Ricochet has been able to do to this man since taking him into the saviors boy oh boy are they working together as a tag team right now look at the amount of tags they've made I think there have been two between White and Joe there must have been about four Double that from the Saviors. Just goes to show how good it is to work as a duo. How much more fluidity there is from either side. Tag is made. Jay White coming back in here, though. Champ not afraid to get his hands dirty just a few days before SummerSlam. Big boot there into the face of Roddy. And a knee lift will take him down as well. Jay White now. Continuing on his offense. Look out. Oh, thought for a second that could have been leading a blade runner. Wasn't the case. Chin lock applied here. Close to Rod, close to uh, Ricochet as he locks it in. Looking over at him slightly as well. Not too sure if he was jaw jacking or not. Mike's didn't pick it up if there was any, and we couldn't see from that camera angle. Look out now. Look at the strength. Feast your eyes on the strength of Roderick Strong. Sensational piece of strength there as he mustered him way up in the air 
On the turnbuckle we go. Now huge uppercut from Jay White. Is the champ going to look to try and limit himself in this ring? Is he going to go all out for victory here over the Saviors one more time? And the turnbuckle White goes and look at that. Joe wanted to throw himself right back into the firing line and comes in with a huge clothesline on Roddy Strong. And again, Strong comes up with the counter. Tag is made, Gulak back in. These frequent tags are lethal from the Saviors. They have kept themselves so fresh. And despite being at a weight disadvantage to Joe, they've effectively neutered it and taken immense control. Tag is made again here. Look at the, the variety attack him off as if he's providing, but hang on. There's movement at ringside. Ricochet moving out of his corner. And he's sneaking his way bit by bit over to Jay White. White, I think, saw it at the corner of his eye. And oh, these two men could be about to get down. Talking trash to one another. Meanwhile, in the ring, end of heartache. End of heartache from Roddy Strong. The arguments continue on. Ricochet from behind with a super kick to the back of Jay White as the Saviors win it in the ring. Ricochet just couldn't stand idly by and watch on. He had to get involved and he did just that. A super kick in the back of the head of Jay White. One more notch on the body of Jay White courtesy of the Saviors. Coming up next, folks, it is our main event of the evening. Finn Balor's waited a long time to get his hands on the man he thought he could trust the most in the originals. Bad Luck Farley against Finn Balor. Up next. And after what we heard at the start of the evening, this may well be even greater importance heading to SummerSlam. Oh, and of course. Of course he wasn't gonna just stay away. AJ Styles is here as well. Of course he is. Of course he is. Towards the ring comes Farley right now. Of course already seen him here this evening, but he's gonna throw down right now with the man who, as I said, he used to be the bodyguard of. He used to be the right hand man to Finn Balor at all in all occasions. And I had questioned when AJ Styles and Finn Balor had, had their falling out when the Civil War had broke out in the originals itself, what side Bad Luck Farley was on. Honestly, I thought he was going to be on the side of Finn Balor. And he wasn't. And he made that apparent at Money in the Bank. And I think this war meets its end this Sunday when Styles and Balor face off with the very fate of the leadership of SmackDown Live up for grabs. All to play for then. And for Balor, it's all to play for now. Maybe this was the betrayal that hurt the most within the originals because of how much trust he put into Farley. How much he thought he could keep, you know, how much he thought he could really stay close with Farley. Even with everything that was going on, there would be a mutual respect between Balor and Farley. Farley. He was never that kind of man, though. He was always a businessman. He was always in it for himself. And Finn Balor learned that the hard way. Balor has won back the crowd, really, since Money in the Bank, since he was thrown out to the originals. It was no easy task, really, for Balor, but he has shown where his heart lies, and he will prove it this Sunday when he goes to Brooklyn to face AJ Styles one more time to represent SmackDown Live. If you had said that two months ago, I would have called you a madman for saying that, in, that at SummerSlam, Finn Balor would represent SmackDown Live against AJ Styles. It just seemed improbable. What started as a 
a battle, tension really, for the leadership of the originals itself has become the war for SmackDown Live. And of course a war that will meet its end this Sunday. I do not know what comes their way, but I know it won't be pretty between Styles and Balor, but they would have it no other way. And SmackDown Live would have it no other way as well with its very fate, its very future, hanging up the grabs. You want to talk about knocking it out of the park, ladies and gentlemen, SummerSlam has done exactly that. And SmackDown Live are promising two instant classics for us with Balor and Styles colliding again and with Fish and Okada for the WWE Championship as well. It's so close of Finn Balor. It's one step at a time right now. And it's that man who his focus is on. He looks at him from across the ring. The bell rings and our main event is underway. And look at that! Bala exploding out of the gates right away with the sling blade. He's going to have to use his speed and his agility to really outmove Bad Luck Farley because there is no way in hell that he is going to outmuscle him. Oh my goodness! Look at the strength. from Bad Luck Fale early on. And Fale, he knows what his job is now. It is to provide issues for Bala, the same as it was for the Saviors just a moment ago, to make sure that Bala is not at 100% heading into Sunday. So it makes that man's job easier and it makes the hopefulness in the originals of Shane McMahon being the Soul standing general manager of SmackDown Live, that much easier as well. Look out! Flying across the ring right now, and again in with that double handed choke slam. Cover made by Farley. Looking to put him away now, kick out. Big boot connects. And Balor is reeling early on here, rolls to the outside. AJ Styles with a close eye on him as well. Balor right back in the ring, and Sling Blade again. Double foot stomp in the gut right now. Here goes Balor going to work. Quickly taken away from him. By bad luck, Farley there, look out. Now once again, he goes flying. This is just, oh my, what the hell? Look at that from Farley, transitioned! What I thought would be a sidewalk slam into a tombstone pile driver. Middle of the ring now, Farley looking to put away Bala. And he almost did so right there, but the shoulder came up at two. From the leader of Bala club. Oh, he swung hard there with that one. Bala comes up with the counter there though. In the corner now. Chop in the chest. Here goes Bala. Signature Bala right there. And Farley in trouble. This is not good news for the originals and not good news for AJ Styles either. They want Finn Bala to be in the worst scenario possible. They want him to be in the worst case possible. Heading into Sunday. And Farley is having difficulties with a man who he knew so well in putting him away. Sidewalk slam, this time it is one. Good God. I mean, Bala can get in a lot of offense, but all it takes is one heavy move from Farley, and everything is just derailed in the blink of an eye. Up against the ropes now. Look out, huge Larry at Farley. Gets ducked under there by Bala, up against the ropes. Bala now, off the ropes, and a third sling blade in this match. It has worked so far, and it works again. Right in front of AJ Styles right now. Bala will look to fly here. Fale gets the knees up in time. Life made oh so difficult for Finn. Bala right now, wait a minute. Fale, Fale, bad luck, fall. And that could be the number done on Bala 
that they want. One, two. Bala gets the shoulder up in time. Fale and Styles must have thought that they had it for a moment there. Shane McMahon must have been leaping in his seat. Backstage, but not the case. Bala still alive. Oh, just grazed him with that discus clothesline, but the strength of Fale means it's enough to knock Bala right off his feet. Bala is fading. He needs to find some fight fast if he wants to keep himself alive heading into this Sunday, because it's not Fale he has to focus on. It's AJ Styles. Here he goes again. Bala finding a second wind within him. Can Fale put a stop to it? Pele kicked there from it from Bala. And the Arkansas crowd starting to rile behind Bala again, trying to cheer him on here. Oh my goodness. Well, there's only so much you can do when you are run down in a corner by a man the might of bad luck Fale. Look out now. Oh my goodness. It's, back, it's that back again. Once again here this evening, we see the back being targeted. Trying to do a number on Finn Balor's back here. Oh, Balor moves out of the way though. Nicely done indeed. And again, he comes in with that sling blade. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And that's Balor's mentality right now. It is working so well. Farley retreats to the outside. Balor will fly! Almost coming down on AJ Styles. And I imagine a part of him wished that he did down on his bitter rival. He is not giving AJ Styles the time of day though. He is solely focused on Bad Luck Fale and AJ Styles can only remain focused on Finn Balor. In the corner we go now. Look out, look out. AJ Styles got a front row seat. A fuck could come his way this Sunday because there's the shotgun drop kick. And here comes. Coup de gras. Here's looking at you, AJ Styles. Covers made and wait. Styles getting involved now. Styles getting involved. AJ Styles and Balor jaw jacking on one another. There is no life in Fale. Hasn't moved a muscle. And Balor wins it. Trash talk before SummerSlam there. Balor celebrating his win. Look out now. Fell out of the forearm. Oh my goodness. AJ Styles just pouncing on the opportunity in front of him. What the world is he doing now? Oh, oh my God. Oh my goodness. AJ Styles with a table in hand. No, no. Forcing the referee out of the ring right now. This isn't good. This isn't good. What is he going to do here? What is AJ Styles going to do to Finn Balor? Just days before SummerSlam, what is he going to look?